What up y'all? Lately I've gotten a lot of emails asking questions about vinyl and turntables. Now a lot of these questions I'm thinking to myself, wow these are really general questions. But then it occurs to me that most of you probably grew up around CDs, where my generation grew up around vinyl. So I'm going to try to help you today. A lot of you might be getting turntables for Christmas, so let me help you out. The first thing we're going to do is talk about how to set up our turntables. The second thing we're going to do is we're going to help you get started with your first mix. But first, let me talk about the difference between direct drive and belt drive turntables. There's a lot of buzz out there. A lot of people are saying, forget about belt drive, don't even go there. Well, on the other hand, maybe you can't afford direct drive. So you know what? Brian says, get yourself some belt drives. If that's all you can afford, go for it. Some of the best turntablists I've ever seen were on mismatched belt drive turntables. They were amazing. Don't let it hold you back. Start on your belt drive and move on to your direct drive when you can afford to. This is a Techniques SL1200 Mark II turntable. I'm showing you this turntable for a couple of different reasons. First of all, it's really the only type of turntable I have to show you. Second of all, most turntable manufacturers have taken this design and incorporated it into whatever they've built. The Techniques 1200 is really the industry standard, has been for years, and probably always will be for many years to come. So you're going to see very similar parts or features on whatever kind of turntable you want, whether it be Newmark or Stanton or Vestax or whatever it might be. First of all, let's have a look on this side. This is the power on off. You'll see a little light comes on. We call this the strobe light. This is the start and stop button, which does exactly that. Starts the turntable and makes it stop. Next to that, we have the 33 and 45 selector. You might have a 33, 45, and 78 selector on your turntable. But this one just has a 33 and 45 because that's all most DJs really care about. Press the 45. This thing goes up to 45 revolutions per minute. Press it 33. It goes down to 33 and a third revolutions per minute. Next up we have the pop-up light. This turntable has a pop-up light. It basically just kind of helps you see where you're dropping your needle if you're in a dark nightclub. Your turntable may not have a pop-up light. It's not a big deal. Here we have the pitch control. This gives you a little bit of extra speed if you move it this way. Gives you a little less speed if you move it that way. Right in the middle, it's dead on pitch with wherever you've set it here, be it 45 or 33 and a third. There are several variations of where you can put this between here and here. You'll figure that bit out later when you're trying to mix. <laughs> It'll be very obvious to you. Now this is the tone arm setup. There's a couple of things here I want to talk about. First of all, at the end of the tone arm, we have the cartridge and the needle. Sometimes you have a head shell cartridge and needle, but in this case, it's a cartridge and a needle combination. doesn't really matter what you buy, folks. It's all personal preference. Buy what you can afford to start out with. Uh, I just did a video recently on needles. Get whatever you want. This is what I have. Screws right onto the end of the tone arm. Now when you move to the very back of the tone arm, you have the counterweight. Now the counterweight is going to determine how much pressure your needle puts on the record itself. Here we have anti-skate. When you're putting a record on a turntable with no anti-skate at all, the tone arm moves freely. It moves with the groove of the record. With the anti-skate, you can kind of alter how that record moves on the turntable. It might hold it back a little bit. And what that does is helps you out when you're trying to scratch your cue. Now my anti-skate, I usually set at 2. Some people crank it all the way to 3. Some people don't use it at all. Now right here you have a little turntable lift lever. So you can hover your tone arm right above your record. DJs typically don't use this thing. There's a plastic circle right here. It's part of the tone arm base. And what it does is it helps you level your tone arm. Before we get into how to level your tone arm, let's talk about the platter a little bit. This is what they call the platter, the record platter, where you put your record, obviously. Now sometimes when you buy a turntable, you'll have a rubber mat on here. What most DJs do is they take this rubber mat and they just kind of get rid of it. And then they'll take a slip mat, which is a piece of felt that you can buy. 
and they'll plop it down there instead. It allows you to manipulate your vinyl a little better. Now what most DJs that I know do is they take a little piece of plastic like this, an old record liner, and put it between the platter and the slip mat, which just gives you a little bit extra of slippiness. Now how do you do this? Well, there are 75 billion videos on YouTube that explain how to make one of these little guys right here. But let me show you one more time. I've actually done videos on this, but here's another one. You take a record like so, inside of the sleeve, you'll find a sleeve within the sleeve where your record is actually housed. Sometimes it's plastic, sometimes it's paper. Find yourself a plastic one. These are called record liners. Plop this sucker down on a flat surface somewhere. Take your slip mat, kind of center it right there on your liner. Take a pen, any kind of pen, here's a big fat sharpie. Hold the slip mat flat and steady. Trace around your slip mat with the pen. You'll create a circle on your liner. Take a pair of scissors and cut, cut, cut around the lines and boom, you end up with two circles because, look, there's actually two pieces of plastic here if you cut it in half. Poke a hole in the center, and voila, you've got a slip mat. Helper. Now let's set up that tone arm. What we have is an anti-skate, a locking mechanism for our dial down here below that we talked about before, and a counterweight. Get down so you can see what you're doing. Take a record, put it on your platter. Now take your tone arm and needle and place it on the record. You don't even have to have your turntable on for this bit. Now what you need to do, there's a little locking mechanism here, and Jonathan has done videos on this but I'm just doing this as a review. Make sure this dial is unlocked and adjust it by turning it to raise and lower your tone arm base. Now what you want to do is just kind of eye it up and get your tone arm parallel with your platter, with your slip mat and your record in place. It's going to be different depending on what kind of cartridge you have, how thick your slip mat is. There are all kinds of factors. But get that sucker straight. Once you get it straight, nice and parallel, lock it in place, and you're done. Now let's set up that counterweight. Here's the counterweight, and it screws onto the back of the tone arm, kind of. It slips on, but uh, once you get it on there, you'll see if you... Move it, uh, let's see, from your perspective, if you move it counterclockwise, it moves in. If you move it clockwise, it moves out. Your objective is to put as little pressure on the vinyl as possible. Full crank on, that's quite a bit of pressure. But at the same time, you don't want this to skate all over the place on you. So here, just for fun, let's set this sucker back quite far. And let's play our record. Now let's do a backspin. See how it skated all over the place? That's not enough pressure. Let's give it some more. I don't know. Let's give it, uh, what would that be? I guess an extra ounce. Let's see if that helps. Still got a little bit of skate, so let's give it uh, another half ounce. Hey! Fair enough, I think we got it. That's how you set your counterweight. Well, that's how I set my counterweight anyway. Somebody might chime in and say, hey, wait a minute, I do it differently. That's cool. Do it however you got to do it. This is how I do it.